A sixth bleaching event has been confirmed in the Great Barrier Reef after a new aerial survey of 750 reefs. The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, in conjunction with the Australian Institute of Marine Science, found the bleaching was significantly consistent with heat stress being experienced on the reef, marine experts say, is due to climate change. Chief Scientist at the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, David, Dr David Wackenfeld, joins me now. Uh, doctor, thanks so much for your time um, today. So, in your words, how significant, how bad uh, is this bleaching event? Well, Kenny, in line with patterns all around the world, in the last 10 to 15 years, extreme weather events on the Great Barrier Reef have becoming more severe and more frequent in line with climate change. And unfortunately, this year is another of those years where we see extreme weather. In this case, it's been a marine heat wave. So we are now uh, having our fourth mass coral bleaching event on the Great Barrier Reef since 2016. And I think it's really important for people to understand a few things about mass bleaching. It means that it's affecting many reefs over a very wide area. But two really important things, it is still very variable. So there are reefs that are not bleaching severely. And in particular, there are deeper areas that are not bleaching severely. And also it's important for people to understand that bleached coral is still alive. It's very stressed, but if the temperature conditions moderate, then that coral can survive. And of course, it's our long-term monitoring of the health of the Great Barrier Reef that will give us a clear indication of how much coral survives or dies in this event over the next few weeks. So in the previous mass bleaching event, did most of the coral recover uh, in the Great Barrier Reef before this latest event? It's a really important question, Kenny. So the events that we had in 2016 and 2017 did see very high mortality rates of corals in the shallow waters of the Great Barrier Reef. But two years ago in 2020, we had another mass coral bleaching event. There was widespread severe coral bleaching, but there was very little heat, uh, very little mortality. And that's extremely important at this point in the event that we're seeing now. We do not yet know how much of this coral will die and how much will survive. But of course, this whole situation just lends greater strength to the paramount need for the strongest and fastest possible global action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in order to get climate change under control and reduce the frequency and intensity of events like this into the future. And I'm guessing it's hard to really tell how long it takes for after a bleaching event because coral is an animal and bleaching, as you say, doesn't necessarily mean that it's dead, um, but it would really depend on the conditions in the months and years after, which would depend on how fast and how quickly they recover. So I'm guessing it would be very difficult to, you know, say, well, it takes two years for coral to recover from a mass bleaching event. There are multiple processes that happen at, at different time scales. So the actual bleached coral that is out there right now, within a few weeks, maybe a couple of months, it will have either survived and recovered or died. But of course, in the longer term, what is driving the trajectories on the Great Barrier Reef. So we're seeing very big impacts, but we're also seeing big periods of recovery when the extreme weather abates for a few years in a row. But in the meantime, it's our local efforts to protect the resilience of the Great Barrier Reef that really dictate its ability to bounce back and recover into the future. So our efforts to protect our wonderful Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, our work with farmers to improve water quality running off the land, our work to control crown of thorn starfish, predation of corals, all of these things are what will give the reef the best possible fighting chance in the face of coming impacts from climate change. It is such an important part of Australia and just delivers so much to the Queensland economy as well and to the Australian economy. Um, just one final one for you. When is the next aerial survey? When is that due? Well, we've finished our aerial surveys for this event now. We are beginning to do some in-water surveys to get a bit more detail. The aerial surveys are fantastic to get a broad synopsis of the enormous area of the Great Barrier Reef. The marine park is bigger than two thirds of the countries on the planet. But I think the real thing is that as we continue our surveys and our monitoring efforts, people have to understand 
that while climate change impacts to the reef are growing and global mitigation of greenhouse gases is absolutely essential, the reef is still a living, beautiful, vibrant and resilient place. We are strongly encouraging people to come and visit the Great Barrier Reef, see it for yourselves, see how beautiful it is, fall in love with it and then help us to protect it into the future because everybody on the planet has a role to play in that because we are all emitting greenhouse gases. We all have a role to play in delivering a better future for the Great Barrier Reef.